Hi everybody and welcome to the flute practice. Today I am going to be walking us through the three silent rehearsal techniques that really work. I know guys, like I used to hear silent rehearsal or mental rehearsal and I would literally roll my eyes. I was like, I'm not doing that, that's like totally lame. <laughs> but as I have matured and, you know, wakened my brain, <laughs> I've realized these are so useful and I use them all the time in my playing, in my teaching, in everything I do. So I am going to share those with you guys today. So the first technique, I've spoken about this quite a lot, specifically kind of with scale practice, working with scales. I remember my teacher once forced me to sit down and actually practice my scales like this and I hated it, but oh my soul, to this day, like I know all of my scales. Now I'm gonna warn you guys here, this is literally the only technique in this video today that actually involves your flute. I would put this more down as silent rehearsal rather than mental rehearsal. Although, I mean, I don't know where you draw that line. So this really involves just doing the fingers, basically. So for example, if you're playing a scale, you're just doing the fingerings of that scale. And even more helpful in this is to actually say the note names out loud. So G, A, B, C. When you're doing that, guys, for the scales, just a little quick reminder, make sure you actually say the correct note names. Like, don't say F sharp when it's actually a G flat. There are different notes in scales and we have to actually use the proper names. I've done a whole scale video, you guys can go look at that. I speak a little bit about this kind of practicing of scales. So I'm not gonna repeat that here, but really saying the note names, doing the fingers. I also find this technique super duper useful if I'm learning a new fingering. So for all of you that are struggling from C to D, for example, what I like to do is I kind of rest the flute on my cheek like that, just to stabilize it. And I practice and I watch my fingers. I really watch them. The other thing you can do is you kind of rest it on your shoulder and practice, resting on your shoulder and your leg. Also a great way to practice. High register fingerings, like, oh my word, I literally prescribe my kids with TV homework. They love it. Like, who doesn't want to watch TV as a child? I literally say to them, watch your favorite TV shows and sit with your flute and actually do some of these fingerings or even just changing hand positions, you know, learning to kind of get more round and released fingers, all of that stuff. Do it in front of your favorite TV shows. It's great. And you know what? Some of them are like, oh, but I can't focus on the TV and play my flute. And I'm like, seriously, guys, you're like literally on Instagram while you're watching your favorite TV shows. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that. Okay, goodbye flute. That was literally the last one I'm going to do with my instrument because from now on out, it's all in the mind. We're all doing it up here. The next strategy that I use is so great for practicing those really difficult passages that you are struggling with. Like if you are sitting with a passage that you just cannot get right, then you need to do this. So, what I do, and this usually comes after I do actually know it relatively well, but slowly perhaps you know exactly how it feels. You want to actually imagine, you close your eyes, you perhaps even just like totally relax your body, get yourself into a relaxed space, and you want to imagine the physical sensation of actually playing that passage note by note. Try, it's so tempting because your fingers, as you imagine it, are going to want to move. Try to not move your fingers at all. So maybe just like rest them on your knees or something or sit on your hands so that you don't actually move your fingers. Okay, I'm gonna actually do a little exercise with you here, guys, so you can feel hopefully what this feels like. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna play in the mid register C, D, E, F. That is a little kind of combination of fingers that a lot of people struggle with in the beginning. So we're gonna do this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna close your eyes. You're going to just feel totally relaxed, totally calm. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna imagine, can you really imagine the feeling of playing a C? Really imagine playing a C. And now you're going to imagine the sensation of going from the C to the D, putting all those fingers down for the D. And while you're doing this, you're going to imagine your fingers being very accurate, all moving nicely together and being very calm and released. Very important. You get to build in any emotions and kind of style of playing into the space, which is so exciting. So we're going from the C to D. Now imagine moving to the E, really physically feeling it, and to the F. So hopefully you can feel 
the power of this. For some of you, you might really struggle with just four notes to mentally rehearse it. And then that's because your brain has actually not built up that pattern yet. Your brain doesn't know what those notes feel like away from the instrument. And this is so important. Like, I can honestly say I've gotten to the point where every single note on the flute I have a very clear mental image and map in my brain of how it feels and how it feels to go to a different note. And yeah, that has come from years of experience. That's also come from a lot of work doing mental rehearsal. Because at the end of the day, if you can rehearse something mentally like this, research, and I promise you, research has shown us that it is helping people to actually build up skills. Like people that do sports, they do this all the time. They're mentally rehearsed the smallest, tiniest movements or, um, and we're going to get to that in a moment, actually rehearsing whole performances. But it is really being shown to be incredibly effective. Like there are studies. I'm not even going to quote the studies. You guys are going to fall asleep. <laughs> but it's true. It's really, really, really true. So you're going to trust your auntie tats on this one and you're just going to do it. Kind of like add a little layer of this is to actually practice whole pieces like this, especially if you are memorizing. So if you're playing from memory, one of the best ways you can practice this memory is to actually mentally rehearse the whole piece. Like Obviously, if you can play the whole thing literally from memory without your instrument even, you are going to feel a whole new level of confidence on that stage. I can usually not do this like immediately all in one chunk. Sometimes I like do it in little bits at a time. But what I would often do when I was playing big concerts from memory, I would often, often lie in bed at night just before the concert or even the week before the concert, every night I'd like come to a complete state of relaxation, be totally calm and relaxed. And I would literally start mentally rehearsing that piece and getting through. And to be honest with you, I usually put myself to sleep doing this because <laughs> it is really fatiguing and tiring and exhausting. So you are going to feel tired by the end of a session like this. It's totally normal and it's a great thing. Okay, the last technique, and I use this so often with my students, but I also have done this a lot myself and still do if I have a really big performance coming up. What I do is I literally imagine myself going into that performance space and really imagine how it feels. Now, important in this is to really try and harness the negative emotions as well as the positive. So this is not just about like, imagining you're walking into a performance and that you just feel totally fine and happy and there are no nerves. This is about being realistic. We are rehearsing your body's response to the performance or the audition or whatever it might be. So the first thing you want to do, and maybe you want to do this right now, maybe you just want to sit there and close your eyes. You might even want to lie down in a space and you just want to completely relax your body. And what you're going to now imagine is you're going to actually imagine yourself getting ready to walk into your concert or onto your concert stage, into your audition, whatever it might be. You're actually going to imagine that. And you're really going to imagine the feeling. You're sitting there perhaps outside the audition room. You're feeling a bit nervous. You're feeling a little bit anxious. Um, perhaps in your mind it's racing and you're running through all the things that can go wrong. And you're just going to tell yourself in that moment to just stay calm, to just breathe deeply. You're going to just gently talk to yourself and tell yourself, you know, the worst that can happen is, well, that you die and you're not going to die. So this is not life and death kind of a moment. You're going to walk into that audition room. You're going to walk onto that concert stage. You're going to imagine the crowd, perhaps the lights, perhaps, perhaps the audition panel. You're really going to feel how it feels and you're going to constantly check in. How is this making me Feel emotionally like what am I actually feeling right now you are going to imagine yourself maybe tuning your instrument or picking your instrument up and you are going to imagine maybe just the first few bars of your piece just imagine the feeling of it and here you get to insert all the things you want so here you get to insert a beautiful full sound perhaps you get to insert the feeling of confidence perhaps you can just have a picture in your mind of when you felt really nice and confident and good about yourself maybe you want to maybe there's a particularly difficult note at the opening and you just want to imagine that specific note and it coming out effortlessly and beautifully or a really tricky passage somewhere in the piece, you want to quickly scan, wh what are you feeling most nervous about? And you just got to imagine performing that passage beautifully, confidently, like, you know, excellently. And you might want to take it all the way through and you finish off the concert or the performance or the audition and maybe you bow or you just, you know, recognize your panel and you're going to leave the space and 
you might even want to like some people get really like rattled after a performance you might even want to go through this you might want to just you know there are things that went right there are things that went wrong and you're just going to feel that feeling of like accepting okay it's done and I did my best guys you want to repeat this simple procedure like you want to repeat this several times before a performance like don't just do this once and be like ah I've dealt with it but what's so powerful about this is number one we are actually preparing the body's response to a very nervous situation or a fight or flight situation and we are preparing the body and training it how to respond and how to respond well so for example if your response is to like completely clam up and go crazy we are able to actually change some of those neural pathways and actually train and teach your brain to respond differently we're literally tricking your brain <laughs> it's great it's great guys this has been proven with research again like i am not making this up like they do this for people that have massive phobias. They train people with phobias to overcome phobias with this kind of mental rehearsal technique. So it is very, 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 very powerful. Sometimes when we have a performance coming up that we're really nervous for, we tend to like shut it out. We like don't want to think about it. We don't want to go there. We're like, ah, it's future me's problem. It's future me's problem. All I can say, guys, is that future you is going to be so grateful for present you for dealing with this issue no okay everybody those are some ideas of mental rehearsal techniques you can do i love these i've honestly sometimes like practiced whole pieces of music on airplanes and train trips and 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 like there is so much you can do without even touching your instrument so use these tools we have they are so cool and i promise you like the top musicians in this world they know how to use and harness these tools until then, everybody, happy practicing, and I will see you next time.